Hello, I'm FTX Toy Cat, and Minecraft is one of the very few games where one group of players can spend years playing the game without ever beating it, while another group of players can beat the game in less than 15 minutes without using any cheats or glitches. How is this possible is the simple question I wanted to answer with today's video, so let's dive straight into it. So the question of how you beat Minecraft in less than 15 minutes can actually be boiled down to a much simpler question of what is it that is actually required to beat the game. The only thing you need to do to beat Minecraft is to go into the end portal and come back to the overworld. There are certain things that are essential to do that and there are certain things that aren't. Killing the ender dragon, essential. Making a house, not so essential. Getting blaze rods is essential, while making torches so that you can see in the dark isn't so essential. And the way that we develop this route as to beat Minecraft really fast is to work backwards from the last task, i.e. killing the dragon, and to work backwards from there to the very spawn to work out what is required in all of those steps. So the most essential task is to kill the dragon and step into the end portal. What do you need to do to kill the dragon? Well, you need to get some eye offenders and place them in an end portal. What do you need to do to get eye offenders? Well, you need ender pearls and you need blaze rods and what do you need to do to get blaze rods? Because there's only one way to get those in Minecraft. You need to go to the nether and therefore you need to go to the nether. What's the fastest way of doing that from spawn? And the simple answer here is that it's usually fastest to use a bucket to make yourself a portal. And given that you need lava and water to make a nether portal, one of the easiest sources of lava is actually right next to the end portal. So you spawn in, you find yourself a bucket, you go to the stronghold, you get blaze rods, you get ender pearls, then you go to the end and then you kill the dragon. That's how simple it really is if you want to beat Minecraft. Craft, you cut out all the unnecessary bits and then you work out how to achieve each of those goals as fast as you can. And to show you that, I figured I would show you one of my runs where I was attempting to get the world record but failed so many times throughout the run but still got a time less than 15 minutes. This isn't a perfect Minecraft speedrun, there's a lot of flaws in it that you will notice in fact, but the fact that we still beat the game in less than 15 minutes makes it a great candidate to explain exactly what is going on here because you just saw me spawn into a Minecraft world and the first thing I do upon spawning, the first thing anyone needs to do upon spawning into a world is is to get some wood, right? We happen to know that there's a nice forest found just over here. And, uh, you know, we go towards this forest in particular because we know there's a village on the other side. So getting wood is the essential part in any Minecraft run. I think that's the great equalizer about it. And one of the things you need to do is you need to get more than a single piece of wood to actually craft anything. In this case, I always recommend three bits, but in this case, we're gonna go with two just because of the fact that conveniently enough, one of the villager houses has a crafting table already. And usually what you need to do is you need to make yourself a wooden pickaxe, but we're going with a wooden saw today. <laughs> See, it's just of mistakes, that's like the third one I've swatted already. Um, but what we're going to be doing today is using a wooden sword because it just so happens that this village is large enough to have an iron golem and the fastest way to get iron in Minecraft is usually on a normal seed. Um, it's obviously going to be to, uh, you know, fight, mo mine some stone, mine some iron, go through the whole process. But the fastest way to skip that whole process of smelting and just go straight to the iron tier if you spawn in a village is of course to kill the iron golem. So now we've got ourselves some nuggets that we're of course going to be using to make an iron pickaxe. Use the iron pickaxe to get some stone tools that we're going to need very briefly in this run. Funnily enough, we use a stone hoe right here because one of the very few things that you'll forget about when you're thinking about the game in pure just, oh yeah, how do we get from here to there to there, is, uh, you know, we need a bucket very badly, but also we're going to very badly need some food to make this run work. Even though it's 15 minutes, we're going to be taking a lot of hits potentially and having some amount of food is a great idea. Using a stone hoe to mine hay bales is the fastest way to get a decent amount of food in Minecraft, and that is why we take that. And we take the shovel for the obvious reason of we need gravel to mine for flint to make a flint and steel later down the line because we actually know where we're going to be finding the iron for the bucket and for the flint and steel. We need four iron for those things and on this seed, because this is a set seed run of course, uh, we know that this chest always contains four iron which is going to be wonderful for us because it allows us to get to the nether super fast. If you want to do this, you just have to follow those coordinates and you can get to the stronghold too where you have all of the iron that you need for the game uh, spawning naturally which means you never have to do any iron mi mining which is obviously a nice little trade. Now we've got ourselves a hot bar which is stacked with all the goodies we're actually going to need to beat Minecraft from all of the tools that we actually don't need to use anymore to the sword to the pickaxe to the bed and even the flint steel and now you can see one of my favorite parts of any run it's making a nether portal this is one of the skills that uh, obviously takes a little bit of time to learn to do fast but even doing it slowly everyone knows that if you put lava in water you make obsidian and that means that even <laughs> usually it's a lot easier because 
Legion under attack from Selfish. Um, but what you can just do is you can take Lava, which spawns all over the Stronghold, and you can use it to make a Nether Portal. And that means that if you want to, even with all the mistakes that you've seen so far on this run, you can get to the Nether in less than three minutes. I mean, even the slowness of me putting out the Flint Steel right there, it was it's a little painful for me to watch back, I'll be honest. But the fact that in two minutes and 53 seconds, we're here in the Nether, ready to try Minecraft's newest way of getting Ender Pearls. It's a super high risk, high reward strategy because the plan right here is to go to a Piglin Bastion. It's filled with Piglins that will attack you on sight if you're not wearing gold armor. And what do you know? I'm not wearing gold armor in this video. So the plan is I want to hide deep in the fortress. I want to mine around, get some gold blocks. Mining those gold blocks will alert all of the Piglins and get all of them to come and try and attack me, which is usually a very bad thing. But in this case, we use that for advantage because all of the Piglins are going to be lured to the gold ingots that we throw back to them. We actually stole it from them in the first place but they don't care about that. They just take gold and they use it to turn into various other things. There's about a 1 in 22 chance that any single time they take a gold um, ingot that they'll give you ender pearls. So usually this isn't reliable enough to, you know, like kind of hang on if you need 12 ender pearls like we do. But the plan is we have so much gold, literally 7 blocks, 63 in addition to those 20 earlier, or 83 if you're counting. Um, and that means that we can have 83 separate trades. And in that time, we're almost guaranteed to get 2 or 3 trades off those ender pearls. And because there are so many piglins because they all came from all over the fortress to attack me. It means we can run through here. We can get ourselves some enderpearls super quickly alongside every other trade they have imaginable. Obsidian, crying obsidian. It's all in the inventory. Uh, but yeah, now we can use those enderpearls not just to kill the dragon, but we can also use them right here to get ourselves to the uh, nether fortress a little faster. Again, when in normal Minecraft, enderpearling around isn't too useful. I wouldn't say it's mostly for PvP and for speedrun stuff, but my god, we saved ourselves 25 seconds or so just just by ender pulling up that hill, it's super nice, and the only trade-off was a little bit of health. In a speed run, when you're trying to beat Minecraft fast, and you know, honestly, if you're just trying to beat the game because you're in a hurry, you know, uh, it's always worth trading health for time because, you know, you have a lot of health. It regenerates automatically, but you can't regenerate your time no matter what you do. That's probably a metaphor for real life too. Although this giant ghast attacking me when I'm trying to do other things definitely isn't. But the point here is that there is a time trade-off to every single thing you do, both in Minecraft and in real life, and you've got to make sure you're always taking advantage of every second because they never come back afterwards. And that is why um, every second that we see a place, we want to be taking advantage of it and we want to also be spawning in new ones by staying close to the spawner. That's why you see when there's a blaze right here, I'm kind of slow to attack him because I know I need five more blaze rods and it's worth taking small risks to guarantee we get this kill um, rather than killing him with only a small chance of getting that blaze rod. We have um, a lot of time to burn effectively. After the first, uh, you know, uh, blazes spawn, we just have to wait for more ones to come in and we wait for a 50-50 chance. Every single Minecraft run ever, um, at, at present time at least, is going to be reliant on RNG because of the one crucial factor in Minecraft that there are many ways to get ender pearls. There are many ways to go to the nether. I mean, I'm sure um, a lot of you haven't seen this particular routine for, uh, before, but there is only one way to get blaze rods in Minecraft, which are essential for Eyes of Ender, which in Minecraft Bedrock, the version that we're talking about this whole video, of course, um, in Minecraft Bedrock, you need Eye of Enders. There is no 12 Eye Seeds, which means that as a result of that, you effectively again, effectively, have to, uh, you know, kill blazes to get blaze rods, because Minecraft has still not added another way, perhaps intentionally, to keep the one uh, part of this spe uh, speedrun pure, but you can see how we got ourselves six blaze rods. It only took us an extra couple of minutes or so, and you're going to be seeing a lot of mistakes as this run kind of continues, but now the goal is to get back to the overworld as fast as possible. Again, if we were, you know, just doing a normal Minecraft run, we could, you know, trade off that time, we could heal a little bit, we could see the sights in the, uh, you know, the nether, there are usually some good chests around here, we could get a diamond sword or something like that, but getting diamond, getting neverite, getting all these fun things, these are not essential for beating Minecraft fast. Again, we really want to drive home the point that when you're trying to speedrun Minecraft, beat the game, uh, you know, particularly fast, it's all about removing any non-essential tasks and only doing a non-essential task if they'll save you more time later down the run. So for instance, if we have a crossbow of some arrows, it saves us so much time from stacking up and breaking all of those towers in the end individually. It's not essential to have them, but they save their time, so it's worth spending an extra 30, 40 seconds to come to the Piglin Bastion and to pick these things up. And conveniently enough, since I didn't pick up enough Ender Pearls earlier, we'll go back and we'll collect the rest of those as we go. So we got ourselves some uh, arrows. We didn't get as many as you sometimes can get, but we got ourselves a free crossbow. We got 39 arrows just from the chests around here. Again, that is loot worth having, in my opinion. It helps us beat Minecraft faster. There is some loot you can find that is just going to be armor based, or there's some loot you can find that's just going to be nice, but like, you know, a diamond sword is nicer than an iron sword. But if it doesn't help you beat the dragon fast enough, uh, you know, with enough seconds to spare, um, than it actually, uh, you know, takes up, then it's not a good trade to make. Also, you can see right here how we have 11 ender pearls. We need 12 to go back to the 
the world to make 12 eye offenders. This was a potential really good time. We were going to be able to potentially beat the world record with it. But then it turns out that we're one enderpearl short and those enderpearl, you know, usages we were doing earlier started to seem a little bit more frivolous and a little bit more painful. So what we had to do is we throw the gold on the ground, of course, and we wait until more enderpearls come out. It wasn't a guaranteed thing, but it just goes to show that even when luck doesn't go perfectly your way, you can just lose a little bit of time and that's when this run kind of went south. But yeah, you can have some things not go your way and as long as you're following the basic principle of only doing things when necessary or when they save you enough time, things might just work out. So even though things were super doomed and it looks like we weren't going to find the thing, at the very last moment we found some ender pearls, which means we, and also like a lot of spare ones, meaning we could save even uh, you know more time right here. We could go back to the portal and we could take a shot at killing the dragon and potentially getting a time of less than 11 minutes, which at the time of uh, me recording this one was the record. It's been beaten since then, of course. Um, but yeah, we were you know still going back on for this. We were like, okay, how fast can we beat Minecraft? Um, this is obviously something anyone can do using this particular seed and anyone can do on any seed. Obviously, you don't know there's going to be a Bastion there, but all of the fundamentals here can be done on any seed. It's just this one has them all very close together. And that's the beauty of the set seed glitches category. It shows a perfect seed, but otherwise, everything you can do right here is perfectly possible in a normal game, including ender pulling up and protecting yourself with a fall. It's something that seems super questionable and it was <laughs> it's not what I would have liked to do. I mean, I would have preferred to land at the top right there, but it still saved us a significant amount of time compared to running there by ourselves. And again, the timer is counting. We're at nine minutes right now, so every second counts. And yeah, basically here is the uh, next phase in the run, which is to try and take down all of the towers as fast as we can without getting destroyed by the dragon ourselves. I find these cage towers, uh, you know, the nice little iron bars they have surrounding it, are pretty good for that. And all you need is some decent crossbow aim, which I did not have today. I was like super, super nervous. I was moving left and right too much. And you know, I, as you can see, the <laughs> we even hit the dragon. Uh, lots of things were not going my way because I was super, super, uh, you know, nervous about this one. But again, we can miss this tower as many times as we like. We actually have a set number of arrows, so we really shouldn't. But we can miss these towers as many times as we like. And <laughs> Oh man, that, that one went so far off the side. But it's all going to be okay. We all make mistakes. Not everyone can get a perfect down on every shot. Um, and yeah, hopefully seeing all of these mistakes um, you know, makes you more, more likely to try something like this. Because it's like, oh yeah, you know what? Uh, being perfect and making every decision perfect in Minecraft, um, that seems like the real goal of every speedrun. Because once you get to a high enough level, and indeed once enough time, people have done it for enough time, it's all about that. But honestly, even if you're making a lot of mistakes in Minecraft, even if you're not the greatest Minecraft player, because I definitely am not. There is a reason I will never be uh, the greatest speedrun ever, because I, I, I make too many mistakes. I play riskily. I don't have the perfect, uh, you know, micro motor, motor skill, etc. But what I do really like about this is it shows the kind of decision making that you can turn Minecraft into. <laughs> and man, Dragon came through, knocked me out. It's dead. It's over. But again, as long as you follow the basic principle of, uh, you know, having a bed, having some stuff when you die, uh, for a speedrun, it's usually not recommended, but we took it. Again, hopefully to prove the point here that like, yeah, even if we're just goofing around, you can beat Minecraft too. And all you need, if you want to beat Minecraft, is a good attitude and a willingness to fight on even when you get a weird bug like this one where as you can see the end has gone dark don't ask me what is happening right here I don't understand the physics of it but things are dark right now but in spite of that I'm gonna still fight the dragon she's got a tower up but I'm gonna fight the dragon with my fist I'm gonna I'm gonna fist the dragon until the dragon is dead I guess you could say and uh, yeah basically the important thing is uh, you know like do a little bit of damage to make sure the dragons leave then to go back and get my sword so that she uh, stays there in the uh, center because the whole point behind the dragon and fight. You might think that it's like, oh yeah, she has like different places she goes at random times and you know, you can do as much damage as you like. No, the dragon just has phases, basically five different, uh, you know, times that she has to fly into the center and you can deal damage during those phases. She will leave as soon as you've done a certain amount of damage to her or after a certain amount of time or if you're not there in the center. So it's always worth keeping that face alive for as long as you can. Also, yeah, we're getting absolutely destroyed by a Enderman right here. This is because one of the ultimate principles here is to avoid unnecessary things. Killing Enderman in the end obviously is unnecessary. Anyone would know that. But one of the mistakes that you can make is you can <laughs> not get some food out and you can be, uh, you know, at the whim of like a single enderman attacking you once and then killing you. So basically, uh, we lost the dragon as a result. A lot of time was wasted on this, like a solid 30, 40 seconds just went to not dying to a uh, enderman. And uh, again, it's just another huge mistake in the run that you can avoid by just avoiding the stare of enderman. Uh, we got lucky because the dragon's in the center though, at least, because we can get back to fighting the dragon, which by the way, we're doing just with gold boots on. Look at my armor bar. We have half an armor thing right here. And despite that fact, we're going to kill the dragon. People who tell you that you need to have a full set of diamond arm with enchantments on, uh, they're lying to you when it comes to how you got to kill the dragon. Oh, we actually had gold in our inventory, apparently, that we just forgot about. There's another mistake. Um, but those people, uh, you know, like are, you know, exaggerating.
exaggerating. Like, you don't need armor to do anything in Minecraft. It will help you in a lot of situations. Uh, same with a sword, you know? You can use a sword or you can use your fist. It's gonna end up the same in the end. Those things help you. Those are good things to do, um, obviously, but they're not required to defeat the dragon. The point I'm trying to raise this video, the reason we went through all the effort of showing you this run and showing you some of my most embarrassments that are only gonna keep continuing, by the way, like we threw an ender pearl and it went straight over the thing. <laughs> um, but the reason I'm showing you this run with all of these, uh, you know, embarrassments and show this, uh, you know, like kind of awful runoff is because to, to prove the point that like, yeah, you know, in Minecraft, people will tell you that things are necessary all the time and like, it's easy to believe them because like, yeah, there are lots of things you need to do. But the truth is, is that the only thing that's necessary in Minecraft, if you want to beat it, is to defeat the Ender Dragon. And anything that directly leads to that is necessary, but there are very few tasks that come under that particular classification. And that is why it's always worth keeping in mind that like, yeah, when you want to do things fast, it always feels better to be safe, but safety is not something you need for speed. Speed and safety kind of come at, you know, with each other, and that is why we've defeated the Ender Dragon in 13 minutes and 20 seconds. There's another 10 seconds till the run's over, um, but that is how we defeated the dragon in that amount of time, and this is a pretty bad run for me. I know for some people it's going to be like, oh yeah, this was okay to get. This was good even. You did some things really well, um, but the point is meant to be here that like, yeah, when you see speed runs, they look ungodly, they look unmatchable, but hopefully by seeing it in this imperfect way, you can see and realize that, yeah, anyone can beat Minecraft Sure, it will be harder your first time. Sure, it will be harder when you don't know precisely what to expect. And it can be harder, uh, you know, depending on your seed, if you get a really unlucky one. Um, but the point of this is that one, if you want to try speedrunning Minecraft Bedrock, uh, you know, after 1.16 comes out, here is the basic strategy. Minecraft 1.16 makes a much higher risk, but much higher reward uh, way of beating Minecraft. And uh, the other thing that this is meant to be like is, hey, even if you're not using this particular set seed or any other set seed out there, because some people, uh, you know, don't particularly believe in that, and that's entirely fine, then, yeah, yeah, you can use any Minecraft seed and the same fundamentals apply. Find yourself some lava, make it into a nether portal, get blaze rods and ender pearls, use those things to make some eye offenders and then do the exact same nonsense. And uh, that is why the uh, you know the record times for uh, random seed are still like half an hour. It takes you double as long sure, but you can still beat Minecraft in less than a single hour if you know what you're doing. And if you don't know what you're doing, you can beat it in an afternoon or an evening. And that's something I challenge anyone watching this video who is in the 90% of players who have never defeated to the Ender Dragon in Survival before uh, to go ahead and give a whirl. Minecraft speedrunning is obviously a fun little category that you can always see little things from and we always uh, cover on this channel because I find it fascinating. But the bigger thing about it, the more important thing to bear in mind about these speedruns is they teach you that anyone can beat Minecraft because there are so few tasks required and all you need to do is focus on those tasks and avoid any unnecessary risk outside of them. And hopefully this video allowed you to realize how to do precisely that. I hope you all enjoyed this video and if you are one of the 66% of people who hasn't subscribed yet, you can do so if you want to control what comes to you on your YouTube homepage. If you would consider it, perhaps some notifications on, it would mean a lot to me, but either way, I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.